be talking about one of my all-time favorite movies, The Truman Show. For those that have not already seen this movie, you might want to go watch it. I think it's on Netflix, I believe. You can go watch it. It came out 20 years ago today. So keep in mind, 20 years has passed and the movie has aged beautifully. I mean, it's not dated at all. But you can go watch it and then come back to this because I'm going to talk about it quite in depth. Now, there's a debate about what is the best time period for movies ever. A lot of people say the late 1930s to the early 1940s. So you've got, like I said, Citizen Kane and Casablanca and Gone with the Wind, all these great movies that come out in that time period. Some people say the 70s because after that great period in the early 40s, movies get kind of bland. There's the studio era kind of takes over and there's, there's still great movies that come out every year, but not as many and they're not really as, as innovative. But then 1969 blows the doors open. You got The Wild Bunch, 2001 A Space Odyssey, all the way into that great 70s period where you've got The Godfather films, All the President's Men, Network, Dog Day Afternoon. I mean, pretty much a lot of the really new classics that people think are fantastic. Almost every great movie De Niro and Pacino made, what cemented their legacy, came out in that 70s period. And then things get kind of bland again because Star Wars, Jaws and especially Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of usher in this studio blockbuster era. So I know a lot of people love the 80s because a lot of people love blockbusters, but that's one of the worst decades for movies ever. And things get really bland until about the mid-90s. So one of my favorite periods for movies is the mid-90s to the late 90s. So starting with Pulp Fiction, which blew the doors open for... I mean, they were making indie movies, but I think a lot of them maybe weren't that popular. Or people weren't really watching them. I mean, a lot of people have never watched Sex, Lies, and Videotape, but they've watched Pulp Fiction. So that kind of pushed them into the mainstream to be like, whoa, look at what this guy's doing. And then in the late 90s, you got Fight Club, Magnolia, American Beauty. I mean, on and on, all these great movies that come out just in 99. And 1998 to get some of the best movies ever made. A Simple Plan, Affliction, Saving Private Ryan, Out of Sight, Rushmore, and then my favorite, the Truman Show, one of my favorite movies ever made. But just in that 90, 1998 list, you can see that some of those were big studio movies that got a big audience. I mean, something like The Truman Show and Saving Private Ryan, those were huge blockbusters for the summertime period. I mean, they were scored in the summertime period, which is out, which is kind of incredible. And then indie films that maybe not as many people saw, but I mean, see, you still have a mix of like great things. But The Truman Show, it's fantastic and for those that may not even be familiar you know it's about a guy who lives on an island and his whole life's a tv show like it's a reality show just for him but he's the only one who doesn't know it so take the idea of something like i think it was a reality show like that joe normal or some shit like that where the guy didn't know that he was on a reality the guy didn't realize the whole show was fake and for his benefit but truman doesn't even know that his whole existence has been like that so he's literally from birth been filmed and on television but he doesn't know it he thinks he lives a regular ordinary life and he's on this island there's all kind of reasons why he can't leave the island they've orchestrated it to where he doesn't even want to but what i love about the truman show is it's just fantastic i mean the production values are amazing the script is fantastic the acting is fantastic but it's not in any kind of like over the top kind of way. There's no deathbed scenes. There's no cancer scenes. The closest we get is a scene where Truman's best friend is telling him that his whole life can't be fake. Otherwise he would be on it. He can't be in on it. And of course that's all being orchestrated by the man upstairs, Kristoff, who controls this whole world that they're in, which in a way kind of peel, pulls back the layers of how we are manipulated by Oscar bait movies. So right after you watch that scene, it's really hard to go watch you know, Meryl Streep or whoever dying in, in a cancer ward and not feel like, well, that's just been manipulated by some directors. So it's kind of exposing media. And in a way, it's a religious movie because who doesn't want Truman to leave? Kristoff, who is the god of this island. He lives in the sun, literally. There's a big sun and a moon that's like the command tower. And he stays up there orchestrating Truman's every move, unseen. Truman doesn't know him. He will never know him. And he doesn't, you know, he doesn't let Truman marry the certain kind of girl. There's a certain kind of girl he wants him to marry. There's a certain kind of friend he wants him to have. There's a certain kind of person. And he's pulling all these strings for his job, for his family, for his life. And Truman doesn't realize that his wife, although he begins to suspect it, doesn't really even like him. And his best friend, of course, is a paid actor and things like that. So even in that way, the movie's ahead of the curb on cameras because at that time cameras were not so small. It, it, it predicted smartphone cameras about a decade before they got into, like there were no smartphones in, in 1998 at this time. So it's predicting smartphones, it's, pre it's pre predicting small cameras, it's predicting reality shows because it could have never foreseen something like the Kardashians where it's like, okay, when Kim and all these women, when they get married to a guy, is it because they love them or is it a business decision? 
you know, probably both, maybe both, maybe there is no such thing as love for reality show people. So when the new housewives, when they hook onto a guy that's more famous, and it kind of predicted that Warhol on steroids, you know, fame culture of reality shows, where you don't know who really cares about you and who's really just there to get more and more famous and be on TV. Well, that's the Truman Show. He doesn't realize his wife can't stand him, but although he begins to figure that out, and the woman that he really loves lives, they don't trust her, so she's been banished, and she's kind of like, like the the Eve, but like she wants him to take a bite of that forbidden apple and get that knowledge, and they're desperate to keep him in the Garden of Eden, and of course it can be biblical in that way. Like he leave if he leaves this sheltered, secluded island, you know, he'll be expo exposed to the evils of man because again, this is a TV show, so there's no crime. They've sort of made the 1990s look like the 1950s. It's Mayberry on steroids. So there's there's no evil that's really inside this world that Kristoff has created for Truman. But if he leaves it, he'll be exposed to hurt and heartache and pain, but it'll be real and it'll be his and he'll be with the person he really wants to be and he'll be living a life of adventure and he might die, he could easily die. And at the end of the movie, Christoph is so determined to keep him from finding out the truth, he's willing to kill him before he lets him find out the truth. So he's on a sailboat and they've got this great scene where he's more, more waves, more, <clears throat> more everything, like knock him off that boat. And Truman is determined to figure out the truth, which is biblical. I mean, it really is. Christoph is God. He does not want Truman to be his equal. He does not want him to figure out the truth. He would rather kill his creation than let it discover the truth about it. And then uh, towards the end, he finally has to give him a choice because the hurricane couldn't take him out and the boats couldn't take him out. And people are saying, you can't let this man die on national television. He's like, well, he was born on national television. So he doesn't even see what's really so evil about what he's doing. It's just beautiful. It's a biblical allegory. It's a funny comedy. It's got fantastic acting, great production values. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I strongly encourage you to check out The Truman Show.